Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all of you who worship with us in person as well as those gathering with us online. For those who are worshiping at a distance, if you would like to follow along with our order of worship and participate in the shared readings and prayers, today's bulletin is posted on our church website. Near or far, it is good to worship together. Today at 4 o'clock, we will have parking lot communion. This month and next month will be the last months that we will be doing parking lot communion. Starting in January, we will be back in the sanctuary. Greeters are needed for our special services that are coming up. One is the evening Thanksgiving service on Tuesday, November 23rd, the Vesper service on December 12th, the Blue Christmas service on the afternoon of December 19th, and both Christmas Eve services at 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock. Please contact the church office if you are able to greet at any of these services. I invite those of you who are worshiping at home to join us now in lighting a candle together acknowledging the presence of Christ as we turn to God in an attitude of worship. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit that together we may share in the call to worship you find before you in your bulk. Blessed in the midst of God's love. Blessed in the midst of our world. Blessed even in the times we find it hard to see the blessing. Even then, may we know ourselves as the children of God. I invite you to be seated, and at this time I invite Arlene to come forward. She would be. Yeah. 
now the difficult and precious task of bidding farewell to one of our beloved members as Arlene moves out of our area. In my brief time here, I have been, I've discovered what you all know so very well that Arlene is a gentle leader with quiet strength and unwavering dedication. She led our outreach ministries in a fashion that enables us consistently to make a discernible difference in the lives of people near and far, and has done so with creativity and with loyalty, even as the pandemic continues to place unexpected challenges in our way. Arlene will be deeply missed, but through her we've all discovered the joy and the importance of self-giving. I'm going to invite our lady to offer a few words if she's so inclined, and then I'll invite you to share with me in asking for God's blessing upon her in this next season of her life. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It has been my pleasure and honor to be part of this congregation for so many years to be part of the church family, and to be part of our faith. We have been through many sermons together, many projects, many, many good times, and there has been some sad ones too. But through it all, all of you have given me so much support, love, and kindness that I will never forget it. I will go forth this, as Sean says, with a lot of wonderful memories. And I thank you and I appreciate it. I will miss you all very, very dearly. And I just want to wish everyone here good health, happiness, and may God always bless every one of you in our church and our church family. And keep up the good work. <laughs> I invite you to draw your attention to the ritual that you'll be finding for you. The church is a family, united by the common recognition of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We are all brothers and sisters, and for a time, the First United Methodist Church of Oakhurst is our home. Like every family, our church community is formed and reformed over the seasons. As members are welcomed into our community, and as they leave for a new home, a different place. For a time, Arlene has journeyed with us. We have shared each other's joys and sorrows. We have lightened each other's heavy loads and embraced the work of the kingdom. Together we have laughed and cried. Together we have worshiped and praised God. We feel sorrow in your leaving, yet we rejoice with you in anticipation of this new while we exist your love and support, we know that you will add much to the lives of those with whom you will worship in the coming years, as you have added much to our lives. We will pray for you and for the whole family of God. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the strength and the protector of your people. We humbly place in your hands our lead who is bidding us farewell. Keep and preserve her, O Lord, in health and safety, both of body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
um, in charge. And uh, that is something I have to do, so thank you. Chapter 21, the first five verses. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, from God, down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the home of God is among mortals. They will, he will dwell with them as their God. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today, as we honor all saints, the Sunday we traditionally remember those with love, those members who have died in the past year, we acknowledge the fact that since the start of the pandemic, we've not been able to grieve together in the ways to which we've been accustomed, as funerals and the like have undergone the same restrictions as other places. And so this year, on this day, we are including all church members who've died since the start of the pandemic, I share a brief reflection on each person's life, and most of these reflections have been provided by loved ones. Let us begin. Alberta Bears. Miss Burt loved all things God, preschool, outdoors, and her family. She loved the UMC so much and was proud to raise her family in its walls. She was a hard worker and devoted her life to her preschool kids and her family. She loved spending summers in the Adirondacks as well as her many years working with her husband on Appalachian trips through the UMC Youth Ministry. She loved being Mima and watching her children raise her beautiful grandbabies. She is forever with us and having a great big party while she enjoys our show. James Berry. He did not say much most of the time simply was present and comforting to all who had the pleasure of being in his company. He worked hard to support his family, and he loved them with all he had. He enjoyed being an usher and an acolyte, and spending time with his family on Appalachian trips and camping in the Adirondacks. He was a proud Navy veteran and a Newton electrician. He would give you the shirt off his back and the shoes too if you needed them. He remains forever present in our hearts and is no doubt enjoying the party with his beloved sunshine. Edna Jean King Diamond, age 93, was a former resident of Oakhurst, a 1944 graduate of Asbury Park High School, and a 1948 graduate of Trenton State College and Columbia University, where she earned her master's degree. She taught at Point Pleasant Beach High School and later at Monmouth College. A member of Oakhurst Methodist Church, and St. John's Methodist Church in Turnersville, New Jersey. She was known as a joyful, pleasant woman who always had joy in her heart and in her words. 
She is predeceased by her mother and father, Edna and Isaac King of Oakhurst, her husband, Alan Diamond, and their daughter, Catherine. She is survived by Patricia and Michael Urban, Joseph and Julie Diamond, Jack and Lisa Diamond, seven grandchildren, and five great grandchildren. these words of encouragement entitled, We Walk by Faith. We walk by faith, guided by the wisdom of ancestors and led by Christ's love. We walk by faith, baby steps, tentative, vulnerable, fragile. We walk by faith, leaps and bounds, confident, protected, strong. We walk by faith, mourning what has passed away, embracing new creation. We walk by faith, each moment forward an act of courage, learning to live as wounded healers, walking by faith, constantly becoming ancestors to the next generation. Amen. <clears throat> Milton Hughes. This tribute to Milton Hughes was provided by his sons, Kurt and Keith, who grew up in this church. Milton and Audrey Hughes' involvement in the United Methodist Church in Oakhurst spanned nearly six decades. Milton remained involved in the church up until a few years ago when he moved to Middlebury, Middlebury Vermont, to be closer to family. Milton passed away in Vermont on January 21st, 2021. Milton began his career as a teacher, then principal at the Tinton Falls School. He went on to become superintendent of the Long Branch School District, and later the Monmouth County Superintendent of Schools. He was instrumental in establishing the Marine Academy of Science and Technology on Sandy Hook. Milton was passionate about all aspects of education. In retirement, he consulted with architects to design educational spaces. He helped many people find their passion in life, regardless of their background and interests. Milton and Audrey managed the church's Methodist Youth Fellowship Program through much of the 1970s. They enjoyed taking the group on overnight canoe camping trips, brave souls, and were dedicated to guiding the church's youth. Many of those young people stayed in contact with Milton and Audrey over the years, and they both cherished these lifelong friendships. Milton loved people. He really enjoyed talking with everyone. He was a greeter for Sunday services and frequently hosted the coffee hours at Fellowship Hall. There, he could really share and enjoy time with fellow church members, despite the protestations of his sons, Kurt and Keith, asking, can we go now? Milton's heart never left the church, and he always enjoyed sharing his experiences from Oakers with his new friends in Vermont. His physical time in the church has come to an end, but the fellowship he was part of will continue through the connections he made here and with family and friends outside of the United Methodist Church in Oakers. also was a dad's employer at Monk Branch High School, and he's a great guy. My mom actually wrote some verses that she could reflect on at the last time, the last days of her life, and I'd actually like to provide to you the five verses that she wrote down, and these verses are really for everyone here, 
and I don't know if you would have lost a loved one or not. It does a speak of a great power of God. The first is that there's hope in Christ, and that that hope is really the core of your belief. And it says in Psalm 33, 22, May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And this is re-echoed in a lot of the verses that she loved. But in John 14, 18, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. And that peace, I think, helped my mom in the last days. But she even felt, at times, like alone, because she was bedridden, and she couldn't really do things that she wanted to. And even though she could reach out to some people and family, she was really isolated with the COVID. And of course, the next verse comes from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2. To everything there is a season, to a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. My mom knew that she was going to die. And I guess that's a part of it that she knows that was going to happen right from the start. We all are going to die. But as Pastor Sean indicated before in Revelations 21, and I'm just reading verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. In other words, you have peace in heaven. And anything that's transferred or been committed unto earth is washed away. Now the last verse, actually, I was a little surprised that my mom chose because she was from a Calvinist family, not she hers. But it's from Isaiah 40, 11. And I know where mom is because of this verse. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lamb in his arms and carries them close to his heart. My mom is close to God's heart. Where do you go, mom? With our church calendar, including at All Saints celebration, the church openly acknowledges the reality of loss and grief in the human journey. We gather today with our own experiences and expressions of sorrow, and Patricia Bunkle's words offer a gentle word of guidance when it comes to times of grief. She writes, When you meet someone deep in grief, slip off your shoes and set them by the door. Enter barefoot this darkened chapel, hollowed by loss, hallowed by sorrow, its gray stone walls and floor. You, congregation of one, are here to listen, not to sing. Kneel in the back pew, make no sound, let the candles speak. Amen. We are proud to honor our dad, Robert Wayne Langer Sr., who passed on November 13th last year. He lived an amazing, fulfilling 95 years. He was married to Lois for 70 years, and together they raised five children, Michelle, Robin, Bob Jr., Paul, and I'm Jody. They were blessed with 10 grandchildren and six great-grandchildren. Bob was an avid fisherman, and he enjoyed boating. He had interesting hobbies like building and flying remote control planes, and breeding parakeets in an aviary that he built in our backyard. He was a self-taught carpenter. From playhouses and tree forts to the screened-in porch and garage that he added to our home. He was also an incredible artist. He was a man of many talents, which he generously shared for the benefit of his community, including 
at the Ocean Township Historical Museum, our schools, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and this church. Bob was born at home in Asbury Park, where he grew up, except for a few years that he lived in Paxton, Pennsylvania, with his parents, older brother Bill, younger sisters Jackie and Joan. After graduating from Asbury Park High School in 1943, he served in the U.S. Navy Amphibious Forces in the World War II Pacific Theater, where he survived a kamikaze attack on his ship during the Battle of Okinawa. After the war, he attended Maryland University and later graduated from Monmouth University. In 1949, Bob's love of theater led him to the love of his life. During a production at Asbury Park called The Tourists, he fell in love with his fellow cast member, Lois Tilsley. They married one year later, in June 1950. During his long career with electronics firms, EAI and ECI, he contributed to the development of military ammunition systems used in the Korean conflict and computer simulators used for the 1969 launch to the moon. He managed the production and development of capacitors used for medical, aircraft instrumentation, communications, and military technology innovations. He was instrumental in expanding the business to Ireland before he retired at the age of 75. Bob Landis was a kind and gentle man and a true patriot who contributed so much in his 95 years here on Earth. We are proud of him, and we are grateful for him, and we thank all of you for this opportunity to honor him today. Thank you. Marcia Speck sent along these words as we remember Dan. Dan's Christian walk was unlike most of us here today. He was raised as a Catholic, Catholic Lutheran youth. You could always find him in the Catholic Church any given holiday, and midnight Christmas Eve was his favorite, with or without his parents. It was not until he was 24 that he became a Methodist, marrying me at St. Luke's in Long Branch. At this time, he went to church on every holiday, but he was still committed to his baseball team on Sundays while the girls and I attended church. Little did he know, I prayed every bit of 20 years every day for God to draw him close, give him the desire to make a commitment, accept Jesus, and in God's time, his spiritual life and journey change paths. God is faithful. He answered this prayer in his time. Oakhurst became Dan's new home on Sunday mornings. He felt welcomed every morning he walked in the front door. He walked his three daughters down the aisle and Mary 
church and was so very proud. He saw his four grandsons baptized here. He always felt the love of God when he participated in the Bible studies, Lenten soup nights, fellowships after church, especially with Bob Landis, Tim, Michelle, and Lois. He enjoyed helping Arlene and myself prepare the altar for communion. He loved helping at the Easter egg hunts and vacation Bible school. He always looked up to the ministers. Although he and Pastor Everly did not see eye to eye on their football teams, the Eagles and Giants, they always had God's love that kept them united. There was never a Sunday that Pastor Ale didn't shake Dan's hand without saying Dan's name. It was always, good morning, Dan. We often spoke about the first day we met Pastor Sean. We were working together on the church grounds one very hot Saturday morning. At that time, there were many changes in Dan's life, but he always wanted to help as much as possible. He never gave up. When we went home, he said he really liked the new pastor. He sang with a joyful heart, and God surely won Dan's love and commitment. His prayer time at home with me was always very special to him, holding hands, giving thanks for all our blessings. He listened to Pastor Sean every Sunday morning on the porch during lockdown. One of Dan's favorite songs was, It Only Takes a Spark. It only takes a spark to keep the fire going. And soon all those around can warm up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you experience it, you spread his love to everyone. You want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I found. You can depend on him. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountaintop. I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. Danny shared his love for God and life in so many ways. And as he lays to rest, he continues to pass God's love on to his children, me, and all of our blessed memories we cherish in our heart. Let us all keep God's sparks and spirit glowing and pass it on until we meet again. I offer to you now, and I invite you to rise and buy your spirit for the gospel reading, which comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, the words of comfort we know as the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. So my dad um, actually grew up in this church for 95 and a half years. He grew up in Oakhurst. He was raised by his parents. So that's a long time. So we all grew up in this church. Um, I'm going to forget. I have a sister. I go past to him. So I like to 
thing, but they're all together looking down at me, probably laughing at me because I'm weeping. <laughs> and uh, I have a brother, um, he lives in California, Alden, so he stands me all day and I can So my dad and mom love this church. They love this church. We grew up here from Sunday school to youth group to um, uh, Boy Scouts. My dad was a leader. He was an Eagle Scout here and received it from here. Um, he also taught Sunday school, which is really good. Um, and my mom was a part of the altar guild. She loved flowers. She really loved flowers. And she enjoyed um, working on the altar guild with her friend Natalie, another member here. And it was their life. Their, their every waking moment was about going to church on Sunday, ending the week, going to church, which was, which was great. I love to say that that's okay. So my dad um, grew up in Long Ridge. He uh, graduated from Long Ridge High School. He was a, um, he went to, uh, during the war, he was at 16. He joined the Air Force and became an navigator. Um, he came home and he became an engineer. He worked for the Port Authority in New York, New Jersey. <clears throat> and um, he worked till he was 92. Um, my mom was a school nurse. She worked at Dow Avenue here in Ocean Township. And when she retired, I think my dad retired six weeks later. So to be together, I know she was ready for that. But um, even when he passed away, it was within nine days. So I don't know if she was ready for it either, but together they are. Okay. So, um, we were all grew up here in this church, this loving church, this loving family. And I want to thank Pastor Sean for uh, reaching out to me and um, very special. You didn't even know them. The changing of the doors, you showed up, you never met them, but you came to my house. Thank you very much. Um, and gave them to me anyway. So it was very special. Um, yes, they love this church. They love being part of this church. They love their grandchildren. My sister has four kids, um, and uh, I have two children. They grew up here. They were acolytes and Sunday school and choir. My son even to the choir. Um, and they have three great grandchildren. And they're missed. I love that they're together. That makes me really happy because they're always together. Thank you. 
pause of silence for this sharing. Let us pray. Eternal God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, we praise you for the saints of all times and all places who have walked the road of faith before us and beside us, for their witness to your love and their commitment to your justice, for their trust in your mercy regardless of the circumstance, we give you thanks and praise. God of all creation, we praise you for all your servants who have witnessed to your truth, those who have shown us your love, who have inspired us to have hope. By their example of faith, hope, and love, remind us of your calling to join in making your new creation real in this life and in the next. God of grace and peace, we praise you for women, men and children who reflect your love into our world. Guide us to continue their faithful work as we too walk in the light of your love. God of all saints, today we especially remember the saints from among this community. We thank you for the tributes we have heard, witnessing to their lives of faithfulness. We remember so many other saints who walk this road with us, whom we name before you now in our hearts or aloud. Bobby Vanback, Louis Morris, Continue to inspire us by their faithful witness that we too might join in bringing your justice, mercy, and peace to our world. Eternal God, as we walk this pilgrim way, make our faith firm, our hope clear, and our love pure, that we might join the saints of all the ages in praise eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise once again in body or in spirit, that together we might offer a shared response to prayer. Blessed be the works of your hands, O Holy One. Blessed be these hands that have life. Blessed be those hands that have nurtured creativity. Blessed be those hands that have loved me. Blessed be those hands that have embraced with passion. Blessed be those hands that have been your arms. Blessed be those hands that have cleaned, washed, mopped, scrubbed. Blessed be those hands that have reached out and been received. Blessed be those hands that hold the promise of the future. Blessed be the works of your hands, O Holy One. Amen. I invite you to be seated.
Each week we respond to God's generosity by sharing our own gifts in gratitude. And so let us join together now in response of prayer that we dedicate all that we offer to our Lord. Let us pray. For all the saints who went before us, who have spoken to our hearts and touched us with your fire, we praise you, O God. For all the saints who live beside us, whose weaknesses and strengths are woven with our own, we praise you, O God. For all the saints who live beyond us, who challenge us to change the world with them, we praise you, O God. Oh, <laughs> 
my soul.